a legendary Halloween event, bringing the fear not only to the Long Beach community, but luring haunt fans from all over the world. After lying dormant for four seasons, this fall, the spirits will rise again. Please welcome to the stage two of the evil geniuses leading the charge on bringing back your favorite haunt. From 13th Floor Entertainment Group, Regional Manager Amy Holloman. And Director of Special Projects, Brett Bertolino. Queen Mary's Dark Harbor is Southern California's premier Halloween event. This event existed for 10 years, up and through 2019. This was a wondrous decade of sinister stories, sensational scares, spectacular sights, sliders, stages, shows, and spirits, and stories that we believe still need to be told, and more stories that are unknown that we cannot wait to bring to you this season. But first, it's critical that we honor the past, and we would like to acknowledge that there has been thousands of people who have worked on this project and we want to honor them. If you are in the room today and you feel comfortable, please stand or raise a limb so you can be saluted for the hard work that you did on Queen Mary's Star Park. Please stand or raise a limb. Thank you. And now, we have the honor of picking up the torch and lighting it once again to bring you Dark Harbor, the Spirits Rise! All right, let's do it, Brett. Awesome. You know, just like all of you, Amy and I are big fans of Dark Harbor. Both of us got our haunt careers started on the East Coast in an old abandoned prison in Philadelphia. And even though we were on the other side of the country, we both came out to see Dark Harbor on multiple occasions. And we were in awe of this amazing event and have so much respect for the people that got us to where we are today. And we're really excited to tell you tonight a little bit more about what we have in store for our 2024 season. You could see we were just babies in those photos. <laughs> I actually fell in love with the event so much that I joined the team in 2018 and worked at Dark Harbor myself. You can see me here in ops mode. I have my camel back on, moving around the harbor. And then you see me on the other side in uh, Sugar Skull makeup, which right out the gate, we want to get you guys some announcements. Uh, Dark Harbor has a tradition of, on November 1st and 2nd, yeah. Yeah. celebrating Dia de los Muertos. Yeah. And we're bringing it back! Yeah. That's right, this year at Dark Harbor, November 1st and 2nd, we'll be celebrating Dia de los Muertos. We hope that you come before Halloween to see Dark Harbor and then come back again to celebrate this important tradition with yeah. us. Oh wait, can I go back one step? I can. Then this picture in the middle, well, I took that of a whole bunch of fans ready to enter the gates. And we know there's a lot of fans out there of Dark Harbor. Um, if you've been to Dark Harbor, if you've ever attended Dark Harbor, raise a limb. Yeah, 
Like you heard Brett say, we are huge fans. And if you haven't been to Dark Harbor, but you want to check it out this year, go ahead and raise the limb and let me hear you scream! Lots of new victims. Um, so fast forward to today, Amy and I both work for 13th Floor Entertainment Group. We're really proud to work on this project, and we want to bring out our president and CEO, Chris Stafford, to say a few words. <laughs> What's up, Midsummer Scream? I can hear all of you. I can't see very many of you, though. But anyways. Hey, before we get started, I wanted to take a second and just give a shout out to uh, David, Claire, Rick, Gary, the whole Midsummer Scream crew for putting on this amazing event for all of you guys. Uh, they do an awesome job, and I think they deserve another round of applause for getting that alarm to stop. Yes. Give it up. Well, Chris, this is a pretty exciting project. Uh, we're curious, you know, when this came up, what, what were you excited about? What kind of challenges did you think we might face? Yeah, I think what I was most excited about is, is just like you guys said, you know, I've been watching the event from afar for a lot of years. I mean, first and foremost, some of you may know, I started as a big Halloween and Haunted House fan. So, you know, admiring the event from afar, I think, brings the excitement of being able to bring this event back for all of you fans. I mean, that's first and foremost. Yep. I think in addition to that too, because of, of how the event uh, closed kind of abruptly, it left a lot of people that were affiliated with the event, you know, actors, staff, you know, without a home to haunt. So I think bringing back their haunted home is uh, one of the things I'm most excited about. Absolutely. I think you asked about challenges. Challenges, um, much like you're all applauding for the event, there's a long history of this event. It's been here a long time and it's very iconic. We want to be able to pay respect to that, make sure that we're doing it right by you guys, make sure that we're hitting the things that you guys like, bringing back those important things. And I think that, you know, Brett and Amy, you couldn't have a better crew to be doing that for you. They've been countless hours of research, making sure that they're bringing back the things that you guys, you know, love so much about the event. I think the other challenge is, you know, it's been four or five years since the event closed. So how would Dark Harbor have evolved? What would Dark Harbor look like today if it never closed? And so instead of starting, you know, where the event closed, more so starting where would that event have been five years in the future from when it, when it closed? And I think that's a huge challenge. But, uh... but it's an opportunity, too. And I think, you know, if you look at the events, um, not just around Southern California, but around the world in the last five years, technology has evolved. Show technology. Like, it used to be cool when you saw one laser. You're like, whoa, a laser. And now there's, like, lasers and then fire that shoots over here and here. So we, we want to up the game at Dark Harbor this Absolutely. year and bring it five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I think, you know, wanted to also give a shout out to all of the folks at the city of Long Beach and at the Queen Mary because they've been incredible to work with on this so far. You know, as, as many of you know, we got to know them through producing Shacktoberfest at the Queen Mary the past couple seasons. Yeah. And so through that relationship, I can tell you guys from day one, they made it crystal clear to me, it was their intent to bring Dark Harbor back for you guys. So. With that, I want to bring out Tasha Day from the city of Long Beach. Come on out, Tasha. Tasha is the manager of special events and filming. And she's going to talk to you a little bit about Halloween in Long Beach and also, you know, what the Dark Harbor event means to the city and also uh, the demand that they've seen from you folks to bring it back. So the city is super excited to bring the event back. I have been with the office for, yeah, a really long time. I predate Dark Harbor. So, <laughs> so when Dark Harbor went away, we were, you know, it was hard because the ship had closed and we had lost the event, but the intention was to always bring it back. It took us a little while to get there, but we're back and we're excited. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Thanks, 
So, you know, we are committed to honoring the history, the tradition, and the stories of Dark Harbor. And I want to thank Chris and Tasha for uh, being on stage with us, but we're going to turn our attention now to the future of Dark Harbor and talk a lot about the 2024 season. And we're going to kick things off by showing this year's event trailer for the first time. Yeah! yeah. this project together because there's so many iconic characters at Dark Harbor we decided to pull in our company's uh, character expert uh, want to bring up to the stage Faust if you guys don't know Faust um, he's our general manager of House of Torment as well as a member of our creative team. Faust conceptualizes characters and design scares uh, which sort of led off from your past on spell, let me think, sci-fi's special effects makeup series, Face Off. So it was obvious, like, this guy's been on Face Off, he knows how to make awesome characters, Dark Harbor needs awesome characters, has awesome characters, maybe needs a few more. So we brought Fast into the picture. Awesome, you know, that uh, you contacted me, you know, being with uh, Torrent for over 20 years, and then even, uh, like, the first time that, I haven't been to Dark Harbor since it's open, but the first episode that we filmed the face-off was on the Queen Mary, which was cool, so when I, you know, we started talking, I was like, oh, I, you know, I would love to do that, you know, and costumes were being pulled out from the belly, it was, you know, Star Romano pulled them out, we started looking through them, going through them, seeing what we needed to tweak, what we needed to add, I started to do the research, you know, like they were still, you know, amazing, beautiful costumes, you know, they still looked great, so it wasn't doing uh, that too much, too much that had to be done to them. Right, I know, I remember Faust gets these, he's looking at these costumes, he's like, well, the first step is definitely cleaning them. <laughs> um, but I was really impressed how you, some of them were not salvageable, and he had looked at all these photos. He's sending me research photos of all of these things I remember from Dark Harbor. And um, sometimes, you know, the characters in different years appeared in different iterations. So we had to make some decisions of how we want to portray Dark Harbor this year. And Faust, you're very helpful in that process. Awesome, thanks. Yeah, and so like my favorite character out of all of these, you know, like, ah, oh, that was fun doing the Graceful Gale. Like, to get, I had to get that bottom just right, the color. Uh, and, you know, from the teddy bear to the, like, even the ringmaster's wig, trying to find the correct one, you know, like, the, even that was, uh, you know, a little taskful. But for me, it got to understand and appreciate the actual, like, loyalty and love y'all have for this, for this haunted house. Like I said, it, that means a lot to me with working with Torment, because I would treat it the same way. So seeing that here, since I've gotten off the plane, and, and hey, why are you here? They hear my accent. Where are you from, Austin? What, you know, what are you doing here for Dark Harbor? Oh my God, like, is it coming back? Yeah, Ch check out Midsummer Scream this weekend, you know, and it, it's just so cool. But I think out of all of these working with them, I really got to know the characters by working on the captain. Um, just finding every little detail, making sure every metal was right, making sure it was the correct hat, making sure everything lined up, you know, with that character. And even down to, I noticed he had a beard. Sometimes he didn't have a beard, it, you know, but it still looked, you know, it, it, it was an imposing character and I wanted to get it right. So Faust was restoring these costumes for our character reveal videos that we've been releasing. Have you guys been seeing those? Yeah. I'm a little jealous of Faust and Amy because I was not at the photo shoot. You see some of the photos here. But Amy was texting me little clips of pictures as these characters were coming back to life and little videos. And even for me, just seeing them, it was kind of an emotional moment to see the spirits rise. So Amy, can you tell us a little bit more about what it was like to be in the photo shoot with these characters for the first time in over four years? 
Uh, yeah, it it was. A, I remember well when I saw Scary Mary scurry out of the green room. Uh, it was like seeing a ghost uh, come back from the past. Uh, I have footage of that too. Yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. I think Faust has a lot of footage I don't know about. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, seeing Graceful Gale um, just in the chair getting the amount of makeup that she requires uh, was like seeing this, this glorious debutante come back to her throne. You know, it was... It was, it, there was a lot of chills, like I got a crush right away. I was like, you're working, that's a ghost. That's a human playing a ghost, oh. Um, <laughs> but I think we all know the allure of Dark Harbor, right? It's so special and it was, it was really awesome being there that day when we did that. And still, you know, at the press event where we got to see um, Ringmaster come out was another special moment. So we're, you know, it's really heart, heart touching while, while spine chilling. And we're happy to have all the characters here this weekend at our booth. But for me, seeing the videos of Graceful Gale was really special. She was one of my favorite characters since I uh, came and visited and I really enjoyed Soulmate. So I was particularly excited to see her come back to life or to come back. And um, we want to welcome her back to Dark Harbor Graceful and, you know, I think for many of us, a ride or, a, you know, a night at Dark Harbor was not complete without a ride on the swings. You saw a picture of me riding the swings at the very end of the night with pretty much no one else on them. But as we were planning Dark Harbor this year, we were talking to lots of fans, thinking about what are the iconic elements that need to return. And I think each of us, if we think about what Dark Harbor is in our mind, we all have our favorite characters, our favorite mazes, our favorite rides. We're not trying to take Dark Harbor back to a specific year or a specific date or a specific night. That's one of the things I love about live entertainment is every time you visit, it's a different experience. But I'm happy to say that we did get the exact same Sinister Swings from the past. They'll be at Dark Harbor just like they were in the past. But that's not all. The Ringmaster is going this year to the Ringmaster this year is going to bring a collection of some unique rides to Dark Harbor. Um, you're seeing some pictures now of Scary Mary's Ghost Rider. This is a carousel that we are currently fully restoring in Yuma, Arizona, doing it from top to bottom. Our team is taking all the horses, they're stripping them, they're refurbishing them, they're painting them a white gloss, and then we're outfitting this entire carousel with Scary Mary graphics, with a custom black light package inside and out, and all the horse eyes are gonna light up. Um, it's gonna be like nothing else you've ever seen and it's unique for Dark Harbor. And so the ringmaster this year is returning to Long Beach. You know, you're gonna hear that laugh. And with them, they're not only bringing this unique collection of rides, they're also gonna be bringing with them a brand new maze, Big Top Terror. Have you? 
terrific to see you, children. Hold on just a moment. As the kids say today, if YK, YK. <laughs> Available at Dark Harbor 2024. <laughs> it's wonderful to see you. Aren't you excited for this momentous erection? I mean, resurrection. Welcome back, Ringmaster. Thank you, Amy. Let's give a holla for Amy Holloman. <laughs> and our maestro, Maestro Bertolino. <laughs> Too kind, too kind. It's these pervasive, I mean persuasive, individuals who have talked us back into coming to Dark Harbor. You know, children, the haunt world, as you know, it's like the mafia. You're never truly out. You keep trying, but they keep pulling you back in. <laughs> it's so true. Well, speaking of pulling you back in, you're coming back to Dark Harbor. We're very excited. I needed a gig, Amy. <laughs> what are some things we can expect to, for you to bring to Big Top this year? Oh, well, I tell you, children, since the plague, I'm not as sweet as I used to be. Some of my hobbies are a little more horrible. <laughs> some of my diversions are a little more demented. <laughs> so we're very excited to bring back our brand new Halloween carnival to the majestic queen, full of some very creepy curiosities and some new creatures and characters. I can't wait to introduce you two children. Are you going to come and visit me? Yes, and there will be death-defying stunts. Yes, here's hoping for some midway mishaps. <laughs> Maybe of not course. safety first, still. Let's keep safety first. Safety first. Safety first. Oh, by the way, your emergency exits are located at the back of the room. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. We actually, you're still working on the safety SOP for us, right? Oh, you? yes. Yes, the SOBs. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> why, why do I think we might have to do that, Brad? Yes, we're ecstatic to be back, children. And I tell you, it warms my heart to see so many of my haunted family here. Some of our freakies, yes. I may get a little emotional, children. And I tell you, as Amy and Brett have said, we acknowledge that we stand on the shoulders of the creative giants that went before us, and that we will honor our past, embrace our present, and look forward to our frightful future. Who's with me? With you, Brady. Well, we're really excited about Big Top. I know it's, uh, you're saying you're bringing back your, I don't want to say it's dusty, but Dust Bowl era so style circus. I'm not going to lie, a little musty, a little rusty, a little crusty. <laughs> and I think what's cool this year is that, as you've been telling me about Halloween, you're so excited about it, is that you're bringing a twist on a circus. So not just your Red and white with clowns. No, and... no, not just your regular song and dance seltzer down your pants, no. <laughs> that there's something a little darker, something more curious and You'll some have to come and see. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we're very excited about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you feel right now? I feel fantastic. How do I look, children? <laughs> well, you know, it's during the plague, I did lots of Zumba. <laughs> lots of Zoomprov. Yes. Kept me in shape. Ship, ship, shape. Well, there's another chair next to you. I'm afraid if I sit down, I might not be able to get out of it. Yep. I mean, should we? You I like to good. fill. No need to sit, but don't you like to fill all the seats? Oh, yes, of course I do like to fill all the seats. And children, please come and visit us down in the Grand Ballroom where you're having a marvelous time here at Midsummer Scream. It's better than ever. And here's to all my Midsummer Scream boyfriends and girlfriends. I love you all. Well, do you think your friend is ready? Shall we bring out you know who? I think so. I think it's time. Yeah. Well, you know, as soon as I bring out you know who, I never get to say anything anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Children, I am ecstatic to introduce this very special spirit to you. 
I think you know who I mean, perhaps. I first met him as I made the maiden voyage on the Queen in 1936, yes. We met in the observation bar where I was singing. And he was, at the time, he was just a merely seaman. First class. First class. We made a connection then. And our demented, I mean devoted relationship has persevered through the decades. Please give a warm welcome to Captain, my Captain, the Captain! Let's hear it! Oh. Stage left with you. This is what happens when you and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. <laughs> Doc Hobb is back, baby! Oh my! Oh yeah. Look, oh, look at you, Ringmaster. You well, hello, Captain. Now, I must say, you're looking in ship, ship, ship. Thank you! You, you, you look, you look old. Oh. <laughs> Flattery will get you everywhere. I know. You know, you know what I realized backstage as I was waiting? We've gotten on in years a little bit, haven't we? Yes, indeed. Yeah. We are I, both greatly altered from the time we first met. I totally took bladder control for granted. I should have peed before I come on stage. I, I was like, told no you way. Oh, wait, that's I too much information. I told you where those depends. <laughs> for our uh, new, new friends here. Hello, uh, last name Captain, first name the. Hello, hello. Last name Captain, first name the. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Good to see okay. you again, yeah. Captain. Yes, yes, indeed. Captain, I think we've actually met before. We have? Don't uh, the answer to that's probably in the script, isn't it? Hold on. Uh, I should tell you, I don't really read scripts. Let me see. Uh, Any Captain, answer he Captain, says, you Captain know Captain it's going to be strange. Uh, Ringmaster Banto. Yeah, we did have a bit of a banter, didn't we? Uh, do you remember me, says Amy. Amy! See, yeah, totally, yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Totally remember you, Amy. Yeah, we were up front. You were out when we did the opening ceremony. Yes. 2018. Yes. That was such a hoot. It was. Indeed it was. Look at that. Oh. Yes. The opening ceremonies, that's my favorite. Really. What about you, Ringmaster? Well, we have, we've had some good times out on that rickety, rickety, rick, whatever they made us, they made me walk across this tiny little board that I had to go over a big crevasse and get up onto the stage. But it was well worth it, the showbiz. It's glamorous, yes. But we have had some good times up there welcoming the crowds. Yeah, you're not really selling it there, are you? <laughs> But I hear, I hear it's going to be bigger and better than ever, the opening of the gates. That's it right. is. Because, I mean, my favorite part was opening the park every single night, right? Yeah. Did everyone enjoy that? Yeah, you did. But I want to, I want to go bigger and better and huge. Kind of like, you know, like when the Queen Mary had her maiden voyage, right? Look, all these people. Yeah? That's what I want. Mate, so, maiden voyage, for those of you that don't talk ship, uh, that's the first voyage of a boat. I don't think I... Okay, hold on, hold on. I know how to, I know how to talk to everyone down to their level. Uh, message at crowd. Um, a maiden voyage is the first voyage. Uh, ship emoji, uh, salute emoji, heart emoji, uh, hashtag... You didn't know you were going to learn something at a panel. Uh, hashtag the captain is awesome. And send. See? I know how to talk their language. And repost. Captain, you right. are so well versed in the social media. I just signed up for the Tic Tac. I love it. Tic Tac. What's your handle? A what? What's your handle? I don't have a handle. I have a spell. Oh, Captain. Well, man. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> anyway, I want to go bigger and better. I want, I want champagne popping. I want, I want crowds cheering, just, just like the good old days. The good old days, yes. I miss it. But that's what's going to happen. Oh, look, wait. Oh, Captain. Yeah. I must say, your aft is looking quite. <laughs> hey. This photograph. And look at my aft. <laughs> look at that. I, I know. See. I have a problem with this photograph right here. That was, the, that was the old days, the old me. I mean, I looked polished on the outside, right? But deep inside, I was actually rotting away. You know? It was like, so it's a lie. It's all a lie. 
Kind of he like a myth. approved this photo and said he liked how young he looked. No, it's... That is the truth. It's a myth. A complete urban myth. But everyone kind of believed it. So, you know, it was a very common urban myth. And sometimes when I get drunk, I mix the words up and it becomes an urban common myth. Yes. <laughs> See what I did there? Oh, you don't know! None of you! Well, I must say, Captain, I find you much more attractive now. Oh. Ow! Yeah, that's kind of awkward. Is that graceful Gail around the hustle? I don't feel the same way. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh... <laughs> let me... I'll let break me, the awkward Yeah, because I, I don't remember awkward. swiping right. Uh, well, um, Captain, I think, you know, we heard that recently you received a promotion. Congratulations! Thank you, thank you. So... I am in better shape than ever. And, I'm giving a secret away. There is a promotion in the works to Admiral. Congratulations! Thank you, thank you. Thank you. And uh, what I'm thinking is that I'm going to audition people to be captains so I can be Admiral and sit back and watch the assistant to the regional man manager of Dunder Mifflin. That kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Any captains in the house or any aspiring captains? I don't care, anyone. Like, you could, any race, any, any religion, any gender, any sexual orientation, I don't care. All you have to do is to fill these shoes that 24 hours ago were black, but Hannah did a great job of making them white. I gotta say, spray paint does amazing things. She did, she did a great job. The there for you all. I don't think they look like such hard shoes to fill. <laughs> wow, you, wow, you went there. Okay, fine. Show me, show me your best captain. There you go. Go on. Go on. Yeah, next. <laughs> that was, that was Open the gates! Right there, there! That's all you have to, You had one job. One job! You blew it. That's your only chance again. Nope. No captains. I'm sure there's someone out there who wants to be captain so I can be admiral. Yeah! Yeah! Then all I gotta do is sit back and do nothing. Wait, that's what I've always done. Indeed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so all we gotta do, all we gotta do is just work out some uh, health benefit things and some uh, 401k contributions, but I think it's a done deal. Sound good to you? Indeed. Okay. I'm, Great. I'm, I'm for anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do, uh, do you guys remember these? Yeah. The bloody tokens, Captain! I tell you, Amy, people went bonkers for these tokens. I was accosted nightly for a token. Amy, it was great fun. Amy, last time, last time I was on this stage, uh, I almost got into a fight. And I promised myself I wouldn't do that this year, but you just brought up the tokens, and I swear to you... Trigger! It's a trigger. I will, I will throw hands, and I'll throw hands old-timey style to show that I'm serious. Now calm down, calm down, Captain. I believe... Not the old-timey style, no! I believe that Maestro Bertolino has a plan this year. Well, first of all, I'm not surprised to hear you both say that. I think... I remember in 2018, when the secret bars started. Yeah. What a fantastic innovation. This, these secret bars, it really was so cool. It wasn't something that was happening, happening at many haunted houses in the country, or country or let alone the world. It was really revolutionary. Uh, but for the actors, I remember sometimes going to hand them the bag of tokens that they were going to give out that night, and there was often actors like, no, I don't want to do it, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and so I think somewhat what you're saying is in, it's, instead of them being able to incorporate the tokens at times, it really detracted from their scares and their characters, because guests, instead of interacting with the two of you, or getting scared by slider coming through, the guest was always asking for tokens. Yes, some of them were just there for the booze. <laughs> and I don't blame them, because I'll have a drink now and then, but I think that there might be a way we can keep the tokens, but do this in a better way so we don't detract from the show. So another problem that ex happened in the past was sometimes fans didn't get to go into a secret bar. You never knew if you would be one of the people that received a token. Who here has been at a secret bar at Dark Harbor? Yeah! I mean, I never left them, to be honest. 
Well, we are bringing back the secret bars this year. There will be four different speakeasies at the event. They are going to be both on the ship and in the harbor. There are going to be some that are in mazes, and there are going to be some that are in realms on the land. And there are still going to be tokens that are given out by actors. But we're going to change it up a little bit this year. The captain talked about making opening the gates a bigger experience. Each night there's going to be a maiden voyage launch party, and that is where our monsters are going to give out these complimentary tokens to everybody that's there at the beginning of the night. That's your opportunity to get a complimentary token. But there's also going to be an opportunity for a small fee to purchase a token from Lady Mabel. Lady Mabel is a psychic that you're going to learn a little bit more about this season, but the idea is that if you want to go to a secret bar, you can guarantee yourself admission. So, you know, I came across the country to see Dark Harbor. The first time I came, I only bought a general admission ticket, and I missed two mazes. This is a very popular event. So this is a way to both continue the tradition of giving out the free tokens, but to also take a little bit of the pressure off the actors so that after the maiden voyage party, they can be those monsters that you want. They can be unpredictable, and they can focus on the scare. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about this um, in the coming months, but we're really excited to bring back this program, to bring back the speakeasies, uh, and to continue this tradition at Dark Harbor. And here's what I like about it, Brett. Here's what I like about it, is that you have the option now to come straight into the gates and then go straight to one of the bars, because so often, those bars would be empty for the first half of the night because you're all trying to find tokens and no one ever made it to the bars. It's an insider tip, right? children. So this way, if you just want to come to Dark Harbor and drink straight away, although I don't know why you would, uh, <laughs> you can do that, uh, or just do what you normally do and pre-game out in the parking lot. <laughs> yeah, you know I know. Children, if you visit us down on the main floor in the Grand Ballroom, these t-shirts are only available this weekend with our lovely medium on there. So you must go immediately after this panel, run down there quickly, quickly, and get one of these exclusive t-shirts. Wow. You seem yeah. very underwhelmed by that. <laughs> Again. Sales. You don't do sales. You're, yeah, yeah, it's not for you. I'll stay in the showbiz. Well, thank you, Ringmaster and Captain, for coming out today. And I do hope that if you guys have not visited the booth yet, please come down and see them. Get your selfie. Ask a question. You never know what the answer will be. <laughs> Lovely to see you, children. And remember, say it with me. Do something every day that scares you. We'll see you at Dark Harbor in 2024. Let's hear it. so many times and still that scary Mary popped out and got me at the end thing. So earlier we asked, or <laughs> earlier Amy asked uh, Chris, you know, what are some of the challenges of bringing back Dark Harbor? Dark Harbor hasn't existed in four years. A lot has changed in four years. The Queen Mary was closed for three Halloweens. Just a few years ago that would almost seem unthinkable. So when we first started planning Dark Harbor, the first thing we had to do was to really understand what are the physical constraints that we had to work around. We know that the mazes on the ship are really popular, and we wanted to fit three really big mazes on the ship. 
Now, a lot has changed on the ship since 2019. Some of the areas that were formerly used for mazes are no longer available to us. They're used for other year-round uses. The Queen Mary's really successful. Um, and the other thing that's a big challenge for us is most of the physical assets from the past events have been lost over the course of that four years. The mazes don't exist in the ship anymore. A lot of the assets were left. So we were really excited to find those icon character costumes in the belly of the ship. And there's a few other um, items that remain from 2019 that we'll talk about um, at another time. I'll leave you a little bit of a mystery there. But as we were planning the mazes on the ship, you know, we knew that we wanted to bring back Lullaby. Lullaby has always been a really popular maze. Scary Mary is a favorite icon character. And I thought back to, you know, my experience at Dark Harbor, and we talked to lots of fans, but people always mention certain things. Two of those things about the ship mazes are the dropping bridge over the boiler room. Yeah. Who's been on that bridge? This fall, when you go through Lullaby, you have a chance to walk across that bridge again, if you dare. If you dare. And, you know, the ship has so many cool, unique architectural features. We wanted to make sure that we took advantage of them as much as possible in the mazes. I remember years ago, the path for some of the Dark Harbor mazes actually went through the pool. The pool is not accessible to the public right now, so we can't this year take you into the real pool. We have a picture of it here. But what I can tell you and give you a little preview of the lullaby maze is we are not going to step into the pool as a visitor, but you are going to look into the actual pool and there is going to be a scene in the maze with actors in the pool area where you're going to get to see the authentic pool. So we can't take you in this year, but we want to make sure that we're highlighting that architecture as much as possible. And we want to continue to tell the stories of the past. And so that's why we wanted to make sure that Lullaby was part of this year's event. So it's the same story as the past, but it's a completely new path. It's a completely new maze, completely new sets. I think many of you are probably familiar with the fact that so many of the Dark Harbor stories are based around paranormal activity aboard the Queen Mary. Um, it, is, it is well known and thought that the first class of swimming pool and the adjacent dressing rooms are a vortex, meaning that paranormal activity centers in this space. Um, this is something I know paranormal investigators have searched uh, so many times and it's based on a ghost that they have met named Jackie. I recently, while I knew about Jackie for a long time, I recently was on one of the evening paranormal tours uh, at the Queen Mary, which I highly, highly recommend. Uh, great for family, great for date nights. Uh, real spooky. You get nice together close and you learn so much about the Queen Mary. But uh, my tour guide, who was awesome, talked about when one of the Jackie stories, when she was a little girl, uh, was there with her little sister. Mom took them to see the Queen Mary. And she was standing in front of the door of the first class swimming pool and her mom said to her and her sister stand here I'm gonna take a picture and the mother backed up to take the photo and the tour guide told us as her mother backed up she and her sister heard let me out in the voice of a little girl which she is a child and her sister immediately ran out of the photo after they heard that voice and then they were worried and saying to their mom we heard a little girl say let us out let me out let me out and that's just one of the many sightings of Jackie aboard the ship Jackie is really part of the inspiration of scary Mary we're excited this fall to introduce you to some more family members of scary Mary as well as some ghostly ship staff so we're very excited about Lullaby. So I remember Lullaby in 2018 and people running out of this maze as it was very scary. And a lot of times when people are scared at a haunted house, you hear them come out and they're, oh, oh, oh my God, oh my God. They catch their breath and then they're like, Taco! <laughs> 
tacos. <laughs> a meat, like comfort food. It's important to have comfort food at Halloween events. Brett, is there gonna be food at Dog Harbor this year? There's gonna be lots of food. There's gonna be lots of beverages, of course. Um, but we are working to bring back some of the favorite food options from Dark Harbor in the past. So El Diablo's Tacos is coming back. Scary Mary's Ice Cream is coming back. And then we're also bringing new food concepts, new bar concepts. So again, a mix of some of your favorite elements from the past, but also some new cutting edge things as well. And I think one of the great things about Dark Harbor is it truly is a giant Halloween festival. The mazes are the star of the show, the monsters are the star of the show, but when you're here at night, you go through a maze, maybe you have a drink, you go on a ride, you have a drink, you go have something to eat, maybe you have another drink, and then maybe you see some of our stellar entertainment. And speaking of entertainment, I want to bring to the stage one of our performance managers, Looney, to tell you a little bit more about what we have in store this year. Welcome, Looney. I'm so excited to see you. Looney, I'm so excited to see you here. I remember working with you 2018. It's awesome to have you up on stage. Thank you. It's great to be up here. So tell us, what's going on in the streets this year, the entertainment at Dark Harbor? So this year for streets, uh, we are definitely going to bring it out there per usual. Um, so we will have fire out there. We will also have voodoo stomp out there. Uh, we will have still walkers out there, and we are also bringing chainsaws out. Uh, chainsaws to the streets of Dark Harbor. Got to bring them out. All right, sounds like that's one way we're bringing it up. Let's go! Anything else, Looney? I feel like you're holding back on us. A little bit. So we will be bringing back the famous Dark Harbor show for the sliders. Yeah. We, will having, yeah. we will be having two shows a night. So make sure you come out and you see us out there performing with all the uh, rest of specialty out there. Awesome. And I know you guys have been uh, training this summer. Yeah, we have been uh, going over training and getting them prepped and everything. So we make sure that they are actually taught right and trained safe, safely so that way out there they know what they are actually able to do and to guide the crowd how they need to. Awesome, I heard you guys put together a video for us. Yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> it just, it feels nice. Okay, everyone back together. I know a lot of us have kind of been like separated. Some of us are up in Modesto, some are here, some are at Nod, some are at other places, so it's good. Getting back with Dark Harbor now that it's announced that it's official coming back, so it's good having that like new life back in us. And yeah, it's cool seeing like a bunch of people just getting ready. That's, that's all we've been doing, that's all we're gonna do. And that's how it's gonna keep going. We're just gonna get ready for hunts. That's right, Martin. Come see the Dark Harbor Slider Show. Yeah. Yeah. To invite up to the stage the experiential writer and director, Ted Doherty! Yeah. Ted, thanks, Hello. thanks for being here today with us. Can you tell us a little bit more about your background and how you've been involved in Dark Harbor in the past? Sure, well, uh, hi everybody. Uh, but yeah, I'm a, a writer and director for large-scale Halloween events and attractions, primarily at theme parks. Uh, and, uh, and But that my past has allowed me to work with some great companies like 13 Floor Entertainment Group as well as Dark Harbor. But I just really want to say this really quick. Um, you know, I've known Amy for many, many years. Amy is a very, 
very dear friend of mine, and so I will always jump at the chance to work with Amy. And Brett, Thank you, Ted. Uh, I've Love known it. you as pretty much as long as I've known Amy, but we haven't had a chance to work with each other, so we thought, hey, this might be kind of a fun opportunity to, to do this. But I do have a past with uh, Dark Harbor. Uh, I worked very closely. Sure do. I worked very closely with industry designer John Cook in reimagining Dark Harbor in 2018 and 2019. So, so I'm very familiar with this event um, because I wrote all of those reimagined attractions. He designed them, I wrote them, and we worked on uh, the, the creative uh, together. And so fast forwarding now, it's, my, it's been such an honor because basically what has happened is I have worked very closely with the team here and, and wrote the overall narrative for Dark Harbor 2024, worked uh, and wrote all of the attractions for Dark Harbor 2024. And so I'm passing that off to the very capable hands of Brett and Amy and their amazing team to really bring all of that stuff to life. But you know what? It's kind of tough. Because, you know, all of these different attractions, when you're working on them, they kind of become a part of you. And so, you know, looking back and thinking back at the different attractions that I've worked on for Dark Harbor in the past, there is one that, that is, was very special to me. It was one of the higher rated attractions that we reimagined in 2018. It was an attraction named B340. Does anybody remember B340? You know, I've been going to Dark Harbor for years before I was ever involved in Shipwreck before that. And, you know, I never knew what these letters and these numbers, like what B340 was. And so it wasn't until I became involved that I found out, oh, okay, B340 is reportedly the most haunted stateroom on board the Queen Mary. The and most haunted hotel room in the world. In the world. There you have it. And so the, the B340 attractions kind of revolved around a character named Samuel the Savage who murdered murdered several people on board the Queen Mary, was apprehended, and then locked up inside of his room, B340, where he mysteriously died. Now, before I was ever involved, the kind of the B340 attractions before kind of uh, like really focused on Samuel's psyche in this kind of psychedelic, scary way. But uh, when we heard these ideas and kind of looking to reimagine it, we thought, well, what if Samuel was driven by some sort of evil entity that drove him? to kill all of these people. So we like that. And so we set that attraction in the 1940s in this kind of film noir type of vibe and turned the ship into a crime scene. And we followed the path of the lead investigator like a gumshoe as he uncovered the secrets behind B340 and Samuel the Savage. Fast forward all these years later, B340 no longer exists as an attraction on board the ship. Uh, but uh, so we had to really kind of start from scratch, but we wanted to, to, to continue telling the Samuel the Savage story. So we kind of thought, well, what if Samuel actually lived and was again apprehended and to taken to a local prison at a nearby seaport? And so for a new attraction idea, we thought, well, let's set this still as a complete continuation to the 1940s, that film noir type of vibe still continues as we follow this next chapter of Samuel the Savage. But as you know, he is driven by some sort of evil entity and there is no prison, there is no seaport that can contain him. And that is what you, will be stepping into in a brand new attraction we've named Breakout. We interrupt your regular programming to bring you breaking news. Samuel the Savage, the notorious murderer, has escaped custody. The public is warned that he is considered extremely dangerous. one of our brand new mazes in the harbor. It's set in that English village that's out there. And we are not only taking advantage of all the original architecture, but we're building some really big sets and set pieces that will be part of this experience. So that'll be one of our new mazes. And as Ted said, it continues that story. So taking the story from the past 
and continuing to tell it. Sam the Savage would be dragged off the ship nightly during the maiden voyage launch and taken to this prison. So we hope that you come step inside Breakout, see if the prison contains Sam the Savage, Ted doesn't think so, and see if you'll be safe in Breakout. You guys probably saw a new character, a new icon that we recently revealed. Let's show them one more time. about the new character, The Surgeon. Well, you know, this was pretty simple. Uh, Brett, Amy, you came to me and said, hey, you know, we have this idea for this kind of evil doctor. We want to do something with that, maybe an attraction around like a hospital type of idea. But there wasn't much beyond that, so we collaborated on some ideas of what would make this doctor so evil. So I went to work on it. Uh, I named him Dr. Edwin Masters. Uh, he is a sadistic, torturous beast of a human, conducting uh, horrible, unnecessary experiments on the third class passengers of the Queen Mary, all under the guise of scientific advancement. And so uh, in this new idea for an attraction, you will witness some of those horrible experiments firsthand. And you will also see where the bodies are being stashed in the dark underbelly of the Queen Mary's lower decks, because this will be on board the ship. It'll take place on three decks of the ship on the Queen Mary. So this is a great big maze with lots of blood, lots of gore. And we're really excited to show you the darker, darker side of Dark Harbor. Yes. but you might have seen that the surgeon has a very beautiful accomplice. Yeah. That's all we're going to say about that today. Woo! Ted, thank you so much for your writing on Dark Harbor 2024. Thank and you. Impact. Thank you, everybody. We're excited to see the infirmary, one of the new mazes on the ship this year. There's so many more things we could tell you about Dark Harbor. Um, but this is what we got for you today. We do want to let you guys know as we welcome up all the panelists back on the stage, we want to give you a chance. We're for Midsummer Scream, we're reopening our pre sale. So please scan this now. It'll be open for a limited time. So don't sleep on this. Scan this now so you can get your discounted tickets. Come see us at Dark Harbor this fall. And you, you can also join us tomorrow at 3.30 for the 13th Floor Entertainment Group panel. We'll be talking about all four of our big events here in Southern California, but we will be dropping some more reveals for Dark Harbor, so make sure you're at that panel, um, and make sure you stop by our booth. Queen Mary this weekend is letting anybody in with your wristband for free, so if you haven't been on the ship or want to go back, that's another great opportunity this weekend. Let's thank all of our panelists. 